If we take the multiple images file that is in your working folder, we can actually look at adding a smart art graphic as opposed to an online image. Let's move to the smart art sheet, which is empty. We go to the insert ribbon, illustrations and smart art. Now what smart art is basically sets of blocks already pre-colored, allowing you to then fill in the gaps. Now they're categorized in different item types. So we have list smart art graphics, and these all have shapes where you type text or even add pictures. There are process smart art graphics, which effectively show a step-by-step -step process. Now, all of the process graphics that you can see here have three steps, but you can add more. There is a cycle smart art graphic. So this effectively shows a process that is cyclical. So we'll always go back to the beginning. And you can see here, there's some pie chart types or flow chart things. Hierarchy shows an organization structure. Relationship shows you many shapes that are effectively related. So we have a hexagonal option here, the funnel, which I quite like, the cog one. There's the matrix category, and there's just a few in there. Pyramid category, and again, there's just a few sort of sharp point to fat bit, fat bit to sharp bit. A pyramid with pop out little boxes and a pyramid that's broken into different sub triangles. And then there are pictures. So those are the smart art graphics that effectively fall into the other categories, but enable you to add an image to them. So let's go back to all because that allows us to see all of the smart art and you can see that they're broken down into their groups by little headings. For an example, choose the cyclical one. I quite like cyclical ones. This one here, the basic cycle. So you choose your smart art graphic. OK, and the graphic is then placed on your sheet. It's treated as another object. You'll see it's got a little handle so you can actually resize down or resize up. And the objects within the smart art rectangle then resize to fit. You can see that when you go down, all of those circles actually resize smaller. And when you go up, they resize larger. Let's make it a size we can see. And with the smart art graphic selected, you get the smart art tools. And there are two sub ribbons here the design ribbon and the format ribbon. So the format ribbon, very similar to the formatting of any graphical object. And then the design one allows you to change between different layouts. So I could choose the segmented cycle or a radial cluster or a continuous cycle. We'll stay with our own choice. There are then smart art styles. So these are styles within the layout you've chosen. You can see the sort of different color blues here and even some drop shadows and inner bevels and even a 3D option there. You can see how it's floated across a little. And two more 3D options and then a button shaped one. So those are the smart art styles. I'm going to go for one of the 3D options. Now you can change the colors from the default by choosing colorful. You can see they all get different colors then or different accents of the main color. So different tints. And we've got an orange and then the gray. I'm going to go for the bright ones there. So they're all bright primary colors. And then the last thing we'd want to do is actually add some text. And that's simply done by clicking where it says text. The word text in square brackets disappears. And we can add in perhaps our objects, bananas. Notice how the text size resizes to fit the text that you're typing. We could have pears in there, apples in there, kiwis in there. And then for the last one, instead of clicking on the actual text, you can make use of this little arrow here, and that pops out an extra menu to allow you to enter your text and edit it here, instead of having to select each individual shape. So our last fruit option will be strawberries. Font size resizes to fit our new long word. We can close the text box at any time, and then reopen with the little arrow. Within our text box, we can move the text values around. Perhaps you don't want pairs on that circle. So I click into pairs and I can choose move down and the pairs moves around to the yellow, down again, moves around to the blue, down again, moves down to the green. So you can see that that's moved around in the circle. If we want to add more circles to our shape, we can do that in a couple of ways. We can either click add shape, see we get another circle then, and I need to add another fruit, tomato and I can delete shapes by either deleting the text from one. So with tomato, I can backspace the text and then another backspace to delete the bullet point and that takes away the circle. I could do the same for kiwis, take it away, or I can select the shape on the diagram and press delete on the keyboard 
and that too will delete the shape. Now you can see that as you remove shapes and as you add them, the graphics resize themselves to still fit within that rectangle. So things will either get smaller or larger to stay at optimum size within this rectangle. So that's within the Smart Art rectangle. I can close that there. If you no longer wish to have the Smart Art, you select the border and then delete and the whole Smart Art graphic disappears. Obviously, there's a lot more that can be done with a Smart Art graphic, but as soon as you've got the basics of inserting the Smart Art, by going to Insert, Illustrations, Smart Art, you get the shapes that you require, and then you add and take away shapes and text as required to manage your Smart Art object.